When it comes to working with a Postgres database within a Python application, we're going to need a Postgres driver. Uh, and so there's going to be a couple of different libraries that are going to do that. That can do that. We're going to use this library uh, right here. Uh, and I believe in a couple of months, a version three is coming up. But right now, this is the latest version. So head on over to the documentation and it's going to show you how to just quickly set this up. And so if we go to basic module usage, this shows us how to uh, set up a connection to our database. And so we're going to import the library. Uh, and then we're going to set up a connection and hopefully this is big enough for you guys. So you just say connection and then here we pass in all of the data um, for our Postgres instance. So, you know, what's the IP address of the Postgres database? What's the Postgres database that we want to connect to? What's the port number? Things like that. And then we set up a cursor. So this cursor is what we use to actually execute SQL commands. And so you could just do cursor dot execute. And then here we just say, you know, create table. Well, you guys aren't familiar with that command yet. Um, but you can do, you know, insert into, you can do select star from test. Uh, and then at that point, we can then do fetch one, fetch all. And then if you ever want to make changes to a database, you just do commit. So it's a, it's fairly straightforward. So uh, let's go to our code and set this up. And, and so the first thing that we want to do is we want to install that library. So we'll do pip install. And I'll just copy that name. All right, and now it's successfully installed. So let's set up our connection. And so a connection to a database can fail, right? Maybe the database is unreachable. Maybe the database is down. Uh, there's a lot of things that could cause issues with us being able to connect to it. We could put in wrong passwords or something like that. So anytime you have some kind of code within Python that could potentially fail, we're going to use the try statement. So I'm going to say try, and then we're going to say connection equals. And then I realized the first thing that we have to do is we actually have to import the library. So let's just copy this line right here. And then I'm going to say PSYCOPG2. I don't know if there's a specific way to actually pronounce that. That's why I'm not trying to pronounce it. And then we call the connect method. And so here we have to pass in a few properties. So the first property is going to be the host. Uh, so that's basically the IP address. Uh, we also have to pass in the, the specific database we want to connect to. We also need to pass in the username that we want to connect as, as well as the password. And for now, we'll just keep that as such. So let's fill in these fields. So what's the host? So since this host is just our local machine uh, for the IP address, you could just say local host. That means our own IP address. I spelled, I misspelled database. And I'm going to set this to be Postgres because that's what, sorry, it's not going to be Postgres. It's going to be fast API. All right, so that database is just going to match up with the name of our database right here. Username, we've been using the default Postgres username and then password. I'm guessing you guys could have guessed what my password is. It is password123. All right, and then finally, there's one extra thing that we have to pass in. Uh, and so this library is a little bit weird. So when you actually make a query to retrieve a bunch of rows from the database, it doesn't include the column names. It just gives you the values of the columns, which, uh, you know, it's like, I don't know what, you know, what value maps to what column. So you actually have to pass in an extra field to get the column names, which kind of seems dumb, but that's the, way the, that's the way the library works. And so what we're going to do up here is we're going to import something else. We're going to do import, same library, dot extras, import, and then real dict cursor. And this should be from. And then the last property we're going to pass in here, the last argument is going to be cursor factory equals real dict cursor. So like I said, all this does is it's also going to give you the column name. Uh, um, uh, it's going to give you the column name as well as the value. So you know which value maps to what column or then it's just trying to figure out the order and then mapping it to columns gets a little complicated. So this will just make it a nice Python dictionary when it returns it. All right. And just like it had in the, um, the documentation, we'll say cursor equals con dot cursor. So it's just calling the cursor method and then saving it in a variable named cursor. And so all this is going to do is this is what we're going to use to actually execute uh, SQL statements. And if it's successfully able to connect, we're going to say print, and then we're just going to print out something like a 
database connection was successful. However, if we weren't able to connect to it and we get an exception, we'll say accept exception as error. So uh, we're going to get the error uh, stored in a variable called error. And then we can just say print connecting to database failed. And then after that, just for our knowledge, we can say the error was Error. We'll just print out the error. So let's save this. Okay, and you can see that we were successfully able to connect to our database. So it looks like everything worked well, um, but just as a quick test, I'm going to change uh, my password here. I'm going to put it as an incorrect value. So let's save this and let's see what happens. All right, we can see that uh, the password failed. And so at this point, what the code does is it failed, it printed out the error, and then it just keeps going through the rest of our code. So then it starts up our fast API server. But at this point, you know, our application is not going to work because the Postgres database connection failed. So really our application, our API, our web server can't do anything until we get a connection to our database. So just having it fail and then kind of gracefully handling that error doesn't do anything. We need to wait for that connection to actually go through before we do anything else. Or then at that point, there's really no point in having our server up and running if we can't access our database. So what I like to do is we're going to set up a while loop. And I'm just going to say while. And I want this loop to just continuously run until we successfully get a connection. So we'll say while true, which means we're just going to keep doing this over and over and over again until we break out of it. And then I'm going to tab everything over and put everything in that while loop. All right. And so uh, while this is true, uh, if we successfully are able to connect to the database, I'm just going to break out of the while loop. However, uh, if we fail, then it's just going to go right back into that loop. And so now um, one other thing is it's going to do this really quickly. And I would like for after an error, I would like it to kind of wait two to three seconds before it tries to reconnect. So what we can do is we can import the time module. So I'll say import time. And here I'll just say time.sleep. And I'll sleep for two seconds, use whatever time you want. And so now if I hit save, check out what happens. So it failed to connect because of wrong password and then it's just gonna keep retrying every two seconds. Now, for a failed password, it's never going to connect. However, if it's an issue with your internet, if it's an issue with the database has it having not fully initialized, then having it just kind of redo this until the database fully comes up uh, is a nice way of kind of handling that. So if I change this now back to the correct password, we see that we're now successfully able to connect. So this is our code for actually connecting to our database. Uh, and at this point, we can start working on actually um, writing our SQL code and then, you know, being able to manipulate our database from our fast API. And I do want to point out one thing. Uh, generally, when you're working with your code, what we did right here is very bad. We hard coded all of our database information right into our code. This creates a problem because, first of all, when we check this into Git, now our database password is stored in there. And then we run into some extra issues because this is the connection for our development environment or our development Postgres server. Our production Postgres server is not going to be running on a local host, maybe. Um, the database might be called something else. The username and the password are for sure going to be different. So if we hard code it in, we won't actually be able to change it in the future. We need a dynamic way to kind of have our code change based off of if it's in our development environment or our production environment. So later on in this course, we'll figure out how to do that. However, for now, we're just going to work on keeping things simple and just learning how to interact with the database before we start moving into things like environment variables.